Good evening. In our, our worship this evening uh, takes its focus from the fact that this is Saints Triumphant uh, Sunday coming up, uh, where we uh, give thanks that the Lord has safely called home to glory those who have fallen asleep in Him. We begin with our opening hymn for all the saints. Lord God, you are set apart from all sin, and our every failure to love, to love you with all that we are, and to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We see our guilt. We stand silent before you. We have nothing to say in our defense. Like King David, we confess our sins and seek your mercy. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than sin. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Because of his great mercy, God has made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. This good news leads us to sing God's praises with joy and gratitude. O oh Lord, open my lips. Amen.
hasten to save me, O oh God. The Lord be with you. Lord God, you have brought us safely to this hour of prayer. We thank you for providing all that we need for body and life. Bless us who have gathered in your name. Forgive our sin. Speak to our hearts. Dispel our sorrows with the comfort of your word. And receive our hymns of thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our living Savior who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let our prayers be acceptable in your sight. Come and help us in time of need that we may sing your praise in holy joy now and forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our first lesson for Saints Triumphant Sunday, Isaiah chapter 52, verse 1 and 5. Awake, awake, Zion, clothe yourself with strength. Put on your garments of splendor. Jerusalem, the holy city. The uncircumcised and defiled will not enter you again. Shake off your dust, rise up, sit in throne, Jerusalem. Free yourself from the chains on your neck, daughter Zion, now a captive. For this is what the Lord says. You were sold for nothing, and without money you will be redeemed. For this is what the sovereign Lord says. At first, my people went down to Egypt to live. Lately, Assyria has oppressed them. And now, what do I have here, declares the Lord? For my people have been taken away for nothing, and those who rule them mock, declares the Lord. And all day long, my name is constantly blasphemed. Therefore, my people will know my name. Therefore, in that day, they will know that it is I who foretold them. Yes, it is I. This is the word of the Lord.
tries to read the gospel. Gospel from Matthew chapter 25. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or hour. This is the gospel. children's message tonight, you can stay in your pews, and it's a message for children of all ages. You know, I think it's tough for children and all of us, when we talk about someone who's died, we go to the funeral, and we see a body in a casket, a lifeless body in a casket, and yet we say, Grandpa or whoever is in heaven. Well, how can they be in the casket and in heaven at the same time? Because you see, we're not just a body. We're a body and a soul. And as long as you're alive, your body and your soul are together. Think of it this way. Look at this glove. Think of this glove as the body. By itself, it's just lifeless. The body is lifeless by itself. But when there's a soul in the body, then the body is active and moving. So when you're alive, the body and the soul are one. When you die, there's a separation that takes place, right? The body separates from the soul. Only the body sleeps in the ground. The soul, the essence of who we are, I know you can't see the soul, but it's who you really are, immediately goes to heaven as a believer. And so we can say, we're laying Grandpa to rest at the cemetery, his body. We also know that his soul is alive and well with Jesus in heaven. And when Jesus comes back, we're going to learn tonight, there's going to be a resurrection. If death means the body and the soul separate, what happens at the resurrection? The body and the soul come back together again. And those bodies that are lifeless in the ground are going to be reunited with the soul, glorified, and we're going to get to see our loved ones in Christ again. That's our hope we're going to talk about in our sermon tonight. Let's continue with the next team.
devotion for Saints Triumphant Sunday is taken from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, beginning with verse 13. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who fall asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left to the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who fall asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. This is the word of our God. Dear friends in Christ, there is no scene on the TV news or a YouTube video more emotional that tugs at your heart more than those wonderful reunions where a military soldier comes home to his or her family. Right? Very often there's this big surprise celebration. Uh, they show up at their child's school or in the gym. Maybe they're hiding behind a costume. And you just can't beat that moment, can you? I mean, there's tears of joy and there's laughter and there's hugging and there's screaming and there's celebration. It's so wonderful to be together again. What you don't see is that painful separation that preceded that joyful reunion. And I think really only military families know what this is all about. That day when your loved one has to ship off, maybe far away, away from spouse and from children, maybe going on duty to a dangerous place like Afghanistan or Iraq. Or back in World War II, some families wondered, are they even going to come back again? Am I ever going to see my loved one again? And so those reunions, when they do come back, are absolutely spectacular. Yes, the greater the pain of the separation, the greater the joy of the reunion. You know, there is a separation more painful and more severe than those that are faced by military families. And that is the separation from a loved one caused by death. That is so very hard to deal with. And you can have all the Christian faith in the world, and it still hurts deeply. That special person who meant so much to you has been taken from you. You don't have their warmth and their laughter and their presence, and it leaves a big hole in your heart and in your life, making you feel often lonely and sad. And that separation of death, it just seems so final. Because we speak of the cemetery as the final resting place, right? We have to close the casket and say goodbye for the last time. And it's so hard to leave the cemetery after that committal service because there's this thought that we're never going to see our loved one again. That's so tough to take. You know, even Jesus felt that painful ache from the separation and the death of a loved one. Remember, Jesus attended the funeral of his friend Lazarus. And I'm always amazed how Jesus acted that day because he knew for a fact that he was going to raise Lazarus from the dead in just a few moments. And yet still, he was filled with grief and anguish over this loss. You know the shortest verse in the Bible, right? Jesus what? Jesus grieved. How come? Because Jesus' heart went out to Mary and Martha and all of Lazarus' friends as they felt that painful separation. And I know that Jesus' heart goes out to you when you mourn the loss of a loved one today. And I think Jesus knew that soon he was going to experience that painful separation of death on the cross as our substitute. And so Jesus wept. And Jesus grieved. Jesus knew that death is not natural. Oh, I know people say, death, it's a natural part of life. It's been going on for millions of years. Death and struggles, how we evolved to where we are today. That's nonsense. 
in the beginning, God created Adam and Eve in perfect holiness and harmony. There was no death or sin or evil. They were intended to live in harmony with God forever on a paradise on earth. That all changed when Adam and Eve disobeyed God's command. That's when sin and death entered our world. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 5, sin entered the world through one man and death through sin. And in this way, death came to all people because all sin. Yes, death is the direct result of the entrance of sin in this world. And now we all experience it unless Jesus returns first. And so Jesus wept, and Jesus grieved. And so do we today. Please, don't think it's wrong to cry, or weep, or grieve, or mourn at the loss of a loved one. That's not what Paul's saying today. What does Paul say? I don't want you to grieve like the rest of those who have no hope. We have hopeful grieving. Because of Jesus, we know that death is not final. The cemetery is not the end of the line or the final resting place. Our sins are not fatal. The grave doesn't have the last word. Jesus does. Jesus conquered death and brought life and immortality life through the gospel. That's the good news Paul's sharing with us in our devotion tonight. Through these words, the Holy Spirit leads us to rejoice and to give thanks to Jesus because he came to end our painful separation. Yes, Jesus entered this world that first time on Christmas on a rescue mission to remove another severe separation, the separation caused by sin. Because of the sin that we're born with and the sin that we commit every day, we truly deserve to be cursed and cut off from God forever. The prophet Isaiah warns us your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. We are not born into God's family. We're not born having life with him. We are born cursed and cut off and condemned. And you know, if we are spiritually dead and you remain cut off and separated from God in that spiritual death and unbelief your whole life, when you die, that spiritual death continues in hell. That is the definition of hell. Eternal separation from God and his love forever. That's truly what we deserve. But thanks be to Jesus that he came to remove our painful separation from God and the separation from our loved ones who died. Jesus accomplished all this by taking the guilt and the curse and the punishment of all of our sins upon the cross. He paid for them. He became sin for us at Calvary. And as a result, we're redeemed, restored, and forgiven. And Jesus, he met the requirements of God's law in our place so that God can now accept us. And the door to heaven stands wide open. Yes, we have life, new life in Christ. Do you realize that we have eternal life right now? We like to think of eternal life as something you're going to have someday when you die. But Jesus said, when he brings you to faith, you cross over from death to life. You have life forever. All that dying thing, that's just going to be your body resting in the ground for a while. But that life will continue face to face with Jesus. You're just going to transfer from the kingdom of grace to the kingdom of glory. That is our sure hope in Christ. Listen again to Paul give us that assurance in our devotion tonight. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus all those who fall asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not perceive those who fall asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. 
therefore encourage each other with these words. Now friends, it's important that we understand the context in which these words were written. The Thessalonian Christians were believing that Jesus' return was going to be imminent, imminent, that he was going to come back right away in their lifetime. And they were concerned about their loved ones who died. When Jesus comes, are they going to miss the bus? Is he just going to sweep through and take them to heaven and they're going to be left behind? And so Paul assures them, don't worry. When Jesus comes back, the first thing he's going to do is raise the dead. Here the context is believers. So he says, first, the dead in Christ will be raised. Now actually, Jesus is going to raise all the dead. As I said to the children, life means that your body and soul are connected. And so death means there's a separation. The body sleeps. The body rests in the ground. The soul goes immediately to heaven or hell. Both Paul and our Savior Jesus describe death as a sleep from which we will awaken. And that's going to take place at the resurrection. Every body will be reunited with a soul. And it doesn't matter if that body was buried in the cave or cremated or disintegrated. Don't you think God, who could create the world out of nothing, can recreate a body out of dust and ashes and reunite it with the soul? And God tells us that Christians will enjoy a glorified body, totally uncorrupted by sin. That means if you last saw your loved one in tough shape, maybe in a hospital bed or a hospice center with tubes and pain medicine, dealing with cancer or Alzheimer's or other diseases, when you see him again, you're going to see him healed, healthy, and whole. The same person but with a glorified body, totally uncorrupted by sin. That is our hope in Christ. And we're going to stand together with them. Together we're going to stand before Jesus for the judgment. Now some people wonder, why do those souls in heaven, why do they return for judgment? Well, it is true, when you die, you have a personal judgment. But judgment day is final and public day of reckoning for all the world to see. It is a vindication of Jesus and all those who put their trust in him. But you know, our loved ones don't fear that day. They're looking forward to that day because they're looking forward to the redemption of their bodies. They're looking forward to this public glorification of Jesus for all the world to see. And... They're looking forward to a reunion with you and me. And then Jesus is going to take us together to heaven. The living and those just raised from the dead, together we're going to be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Now, some churches teach a false doctrine called the rapture. They believe that at some point before Judgment Day, Jesus is going to take away some of the believers while everyone else will be left behind for a time of tribulation and trouble. But Paul's point here is that no one's going to be left behind. The context of Paul's words in 1 Thessalonians 4 is not about some event that's going to take place before Judgment Day. Actually, he's describing what's going to happen on Judgment Day. Let me put on the screen a simple timeline of events on that last day. Jesus returns visibly in glory. Jesus raises all the dead in an instant. Then there's a final judgment based on faith or unbelief. The unbelievers are sent away to hell. The believers, body and soul, join Jesus in heaven. And this present world will be destroyed by fire as we live in a new heaven and a new earth. Now, all these events happen on the last day, just like that. Our separation will end, and our joyful reunion will commence. You think military reunions are great? Just think how grand and glorious that day will be, because you're going to see your loved ones in Christ once again. You're going to see Martin Luther and the Apostle Paul, but greatest of all, you're going to see Jesus face to face, and you know that you belong there. And remember, because of Jesus, our separation is only temporary. Oh, I know it's hard, and it seems long, but your earthly separation from your loved one, it's only temporary. But your reunion with them is going to be eternal. 
It'd be like if I went to Lake Michigan and picked up one grain of sand, that's the length of your life on this earth. All the rest of the sand around all the great lakes, that's just a little beginning of what eternity is going to be. So hang in there. Make it through the temporary separation and look forward to the reunion forever. And we also learn from Paul that the separation is painful, but the reunion is going to be so glorious that our former pain and suffering won't even come to mind. We won't even think of it anymore. Paul told us, I consider that our present sufferings are not even worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And so Paul says, encourage each other with these words. Friends, that means we have something to say at a funeral. We have something to say to someone who's lost a loved one. We can tell them that death is not final. We can tell them about Jesus, how he came to remove their painful separation, how he conquered death, and how we can look forward to a joyful reunion in heaven. And we have something to say to people who don't know about Jesus, right? We can warn them and encourage them and invite them to come and see and come and learn about Jesus so they too can have that new life in Christ and they too can be with us in heaven one day. Yes, the separation caused by death is painful and it's severe, but thanks be to Jesus, it's not coming. You see, we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus all those who've fallen asleep in him. Oh, what a joyful reunion that'll be. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. As we celebrate the festival of saints triumphant, we remember the faithful who have gone before us. In our prayer and song, we especially remember those who have departed from among our congregation in the past year. Though our hearts ache from the loss of their physical presence, our hearts yearn for our reunion in heaven at the marriage feast of the Lamb. By your gracious promises. Forgive our failures to live as you desire. Strengthen the faith of all who are weak and wandering. forever in new heavens and a new earth. The sound of weeping and crying will be heard no more. We anticipate with joy an eternity of perfect fellowship with you.
I am the resurrection and the life. He who <coughs> believes in me will live even though he dies. Gertrude Bacchus. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Adelia Dins. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. And Father, I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. Sandy Pusher, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Becky Colway. For none of us lives to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So Kathy Lockman. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Art Schmidt. Brothers, we did not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. Borns. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. Joyce Gatsby. My flesh and my heart may fail. Jim Laubenstein. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. Ralph Bolway. day is coming when you will come down from heaven with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God. On that glorious day, the saints triumphant will rise in bright array, clothed in your perfect righteousness. Lord Jesus, great physician of body and soul, we thank you 
for your promise to be with your people and to strengthen them and bless them. We seek your, your comfort and assurance for Carrie Greenwood as she faces surgery, for the members of Barney Youngbeck's family who are dealing with COVID, for Doris Poole who is dealing with, with, with cancer. We pray especially that you would comfort and strengthen Don Hankel, the brother of Jerry, who is now in hospice care. Strengthen them by your spirit and assure them of your love. We give you thanks, Lord, that you have brought Michelle McGee and Cordell Strott, the mother of Deb Gross, safely through surgery. Continue to be with them. Bless, bless them on their road to recovery. And Lord, Lord of life and death, we pray that you would comfort Amy Gerlain and her family as they mourn the death of her father. Direct their hearts to your precious promises, the solid comfort that is found in Jesus Christ, who lived and died in our place. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. hours of this day, hear us as we pray, O oh Lord. For the well-being of people everywhere, for the growth of your church in all the world, and for the strengthening of all who serve and worship here, we pray, O oh Lord. For one another, young and old, for your blessings that come with every stage of life and for joy in doing your will, we pray, O oh Lord. For our public servants who work day and night to bring protection, justice, learning, and health to this and every place, we pray to you, O oh Lord. for favorable weather and bountiful harvest, for clothing and food, for health of body, mind, and spirit, and for deliverance from all sin and every form of evil, we pray to you, O Lord. For the faithful who have gone before us, who have shared with us your good news, whose souls are now at rest in your heavenly kingdom, we give you thanks, O Lord. In thanksgiving for your many and varied gifts to us, we now commend ourselves to your care. Be our shield and strength, O Lord. Lord God, all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works come from you. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments. Defend us also from the fear of our enemies, that we may live in peace and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.